people and welcome to my Sparrow Art Vibes YouTube channel. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I'm Hazel and every week I share how I create the products that I sell in my growing Etsy shop and in my Shopify store. <clears throat> Several weeks ago I created a just absolutely gorgeous sea turtle charcuterie board um, it was ordered through my Shopify store as a birthday gift I also created a matching set of um, sea turtle beverage coasters as well as the um, cheese knives cheese tools to go with it at the time I simply did not realize just how popular sea turtles are today I mean I, I really didn't know it so I googled sea turtle decor and and wow I mean I couldn't even read that number 27 million 800,000 results I then went to Etsy just to check out what they have um, and my goodness look at all the choices so in an effort to catch up with the trend I ordered a couple of sea turtle items so I ordered a sea turtle figurine mold, which I'm going to make in this video. I ordered a sea turtle. Hmm, I guess you can see this a sea turtle a mold for a sea turtle tray. This is a little smaller. This is a little smaller than what I had in mind, but we'll see. And then um just to make sure I've got some bling, I ordered some new uh, chameleon mica powder. And this is kind of like a, a color shift. Um, but yeah, so I ordered this and this is what we're going to do. So in today's video, I am going to show you how I made my first sea turtle figurine. Um, and again, I'm going to sort of try and match this to the charcuterie board. So let me move this box out the way and we will take a look at the materials I need to make my little sea turtle figurine. Okay, so let's get this party started. The very first thing we need, of course, is our sea turtle mold. Um, this is a good size. I didn't actually measure it, but you figure it's the length of my hand, so yeah, that's the length of my hand, so this is a nice size, so we need our sea turtle mold. My go-to resin, um, again, because of the discounts uh, that I get at Michael's, I use the Craft Smart. This is the Part A casting and coating resin. This is the Part B hardener. And of course, I need a measuring cup. Two colors of mica powder and some sand. So we need three paper cups. And that means I need a total of four stir sticks. I of course need my nitro gloves. And I haven't exactly figured this out in my head but we are going to be using uh, for mica powder what I did the uh, charcuterie board in was the all starry aqua blue and I've got the Nodway chameleon powder and we are going to be using the blue cyan this is just one of my favorite colors, not way chameleon, blue cyan. Set that there. And then the um, charcuterie board turtle 
his shell was actually done in abalone shells and so that's this bag and the label said Mo mosaic accents seashell chips I got these in um, Hobby Lobby so those seashell chips there but that was for his back and then his feet his feet his flippers were done in this tinsel glitter so I'll put that there and his face had the extra fine craft smart Ooh, can you see that extra fine glitter that little teeny thing there but I'm thinking I'm wanting some seashells somewhere else uh, I haven't quite figured it out so here are uh, natural colored abalone shell chips and I've got a jar of little teeny little teeny ones here um, not sure yet what I'm doing with that but anyway I think that oh we need a paintbrush so that I can dust uh, the inside of the mold and you know I change my mind as I'm going along so I may need something else but okay let's take this off and let's get started Uh, if you have never done a particular um, project or, or used a mold, uh, I think the greatest amount of thinking that I do is just choosing a color palette. And so this, I guess this is, an, I need one of those cameras where I can see what's on the screen. This is a picture of the sea turtle on the charcuterie board that I did. And so we know we're working with the blue. I already picked, um, again, the aqua blue and the blue cyan because that's what was on here. Um, but as I'm looking at this now, I'm, I'm seeing this gold here on the bottom. And remember when you do these molds, this is all upside down. So, if I want the gold to show on the front of the flippers, I need to get that gold in. I was looking at this. I need to get some gold in here um, and on his stomach, which would be on the bottom, not on the top, um, and some gold on his face. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to work with this. But we're going to... I didn't have gold uh, <clears throat> I didn't have gold mica powder in my materials because I hadn't really looked at this image but I'm going to take some gold mica powder and dust right along the edge right along the edge here um, so whatever so I'm going to grab imperial gold which was we did not have but again, looking at this picture made me change my mind. And so I am simply going to take this Imperial Gold and I am going to dust around, oops. I don't know, where am I dusting? Yeah, I guess around just a little bit. <clears throat> this, as I try and figure out what I wanna do. I'm going to take this Imperial Gold and I'm just going to run a line and this is not something that needs to be exact for the way I'm doing it um, Where I have gold on the front of his flippers there, I want gold on the front of his flippers here. And I started dusting um, 
using the dusting technique on my resin trays because I would finish the tray and then I take um, a marker, a gold marker and go around the outer edge and then I got the, um, what do you call it, the Martha Stewart. Then I started buying the gilding paint. And of course, when you use that, then you really, to do it correctly, need to then go back over it with varnish to seal it. And that keeps it from tarnishing. Um, so yeah, so when we turn this over, we're going to have some gold along there. You can't see under the neck. Uh, yeah. Um, a little gold on the face, I guess, on the head. Let's do a little gold in here above the eyes. Accent there. Yeah, this is actually underneath. This is not this color that I'm looking at here is underneath. It's not really on top. Um, so and let's just stick a little bit of gold in here for his tail. Yeah, let's make the tip of his tail gold. Do the back flippers have gold a little bit? Let's let's do a little gold on the back flippers as well. And again, I'm not really painting this. I'm just these are like highlights. These would be gold highlights more than anything. Okay, so now, now I want to take the blue cyan and I want to go around the edge of his shell and I want to do, what do you call these, cracks? The cracks in his shell. So let's see, let's see how we do here. If I were doing this, I would then take a um, brush dipped in alcohol to get this off the sides here, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave this just like it is. concerned um, when I do the dusting for the um, those coasters that I have that have the ladies with the flowers on the head I always go back and get rid of this glitter that kind of falls over I go in and I wipe all of that out but I'm not going to do that this time I'm going to let whatever goes over the edge go over Again, when you dust like this, then you don't have to go back and fill in when this is finished. Uh, but we're going to see. Not used this before, so we get to, you get to learn with me. We're going to learn together. So what I'm going to do is finish these 
uh, the cracks in the shell and the body and the head take 100 milliliters of resin and so we're going to mix that and pour in not a full hundred <clears throat> I'm going to do this in layers uh, so shimmery. I have it real heavy on some places and lighter on others. can't quite figure out what I'm doing. Let me see. I'm trying this. You're trying to visualize this upside down. That's the thing. Um, and I'm going to be adding blue start sentences and don't finish them. It's funny because again I'm trying to visualize this upside down. So I'm going to um, take this off the table, hold it over the wastebasket, and just shake off the excess mica powder. this in tinsel glitter um, well you know what on second thought let's just go ahead and put a little bit let's just go ahead and put a little bit in here Ooh, that is not a little bit but we'll use that on this side Okay, 
Let me take this off the table and shake off the excess. Okay, so you see that big glob that was there is gone. All right, so I'm not going to wipe this out. If I were doing the, um, the what do you call them, the coasters, I would then take a brush with alcohol and I would wipe all of this dust off the inside. I'm not going to do that. Now I'm going to mix uh, my clear resin. All right, um, I've been thinking. First of all, I need to paint his eyes. So I have these um, paint, these, what are they? I don't know the name. How does that? Artistro. Artistro glitter paint pens that I'm using. So I am going to take out the black. And we're going to get his eyes. Get his eyes painted. Ooh, well guess what? This paint pen, that's what I just discovered. The paint pen will not adhere to the silicone. Huh, well, I may have to paint his eyes <clears throat> after he is done. That didn't, oh, you know what? Actually, I can just use black mica powder. Okay, this is not black. This is Rolio Silver Ash, but I love this stuff. Um, let's see if I can get a little bit of this in here. I think I'm still gonna have to go and paint his eyes afterwards. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to do his eyes after he's finished. All right, yeah, we're gonna paint his eyes on with a permanent marker after he's done. Trying to clean out around his eyes. I didn't didn't like that. Okay, so now we need to pour 100 milliliters. So my cup is marked in purple, 50 and 100. I always remind crafters to follow manufacturers instructions. Uh, Envirotex Light has you mix for three minutes. This is different. Uh, Craftsmart, we have a, can you see it? A mixing ratio of one to one and we are mixing for a minimum of five minutes. So we are going to pour <clears throat> 50 milliliters of the Part B hardener. And 50 milliliters of the Part A resin. Smart requires us to mix for five minutes. So you can just fast forward through me doing this.
All right. Um, I actually have had a change of heart. And I, I was supposed to pour the clear resin into the body and then add the shells. But in the five minutes it took me to mix this, I changed my mind. Um, yeah, I was supposed to be pouring clear in here, setting the shells in here. I have now changed my mind. I am going to tint this with the aqua blue, pour that in. And what I'm going to do now is put the shells on the outside of the turtle. That's what makes that charcuterie board so stunning, is that you actually have all of that texture because when you look at that board, those shells are above the surface. It really makes it um, spectacular. So I am going to do two things. I am going to, one, let me see, let me see, yeah. I am going to, Okay, let me get it straight in my head. All right, I'm going to do two things. I am going to put clear. I am going to put some clear in the fins. Let's do that. Let's put some clear in the fins. And that's for the tinsel glitter. We're not pouring this deep. This is just like a coating for the glitter to stick to. We're going to, me and my ideas, let's just do this, let's do this, uh, and then we're going to use the back of our, and the gift was for the uh, owner of Blue Ocean Dermatology. That's why this is on here because I'm now going to take this and make this into a canvas. Just take this print and put it on a canvas. But anyway, let's turn that over. And I have the tinsel glitter. There's a bright blue, there's a royal blue, and another blue. We're going to use the lighter blue. And I'm just going to Oh, you know what? I should have done that in varnish. Ah, shinny. I should have done that in varnish. Okay, well, this is this is how we learn. Yeah, I should have put varnish. And not resin. Let's take you. should have done this in varnish. That's okay. That's okay. It's not a problem. I had one idea in my mind and now this is morphing into something a little different. Again, the goal was to try and make this as close to um, the charcuterie board. So I was looking for the same textures. And let's put a little dab in his head. Then the fine glitter, and this this I know why this this was marked down, and I think it's because there's no shaker on this thing. Um, there's no shaker on here. This is I I started using this, and I said, oh no shaker, you don't have any control. Let's 
Wee. Put a little glitter in that tail. I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not. So I had these cups, um, but again, I've changed my mind about what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So we are going to mix the All Starry Blue, Aqua Blue into the resin. Now again, I'm going to be covering the outside. I decided to, instead of put pouring clear in here and setting the blue shells in here, I'm going to fill this blue and then I am going to put the shells on the outside once it's finished. All right, so other thing is I'm doing a little bit of a, a lot of changing I'm adding another color an Okinawa blue an all starry Okinawa blue and we're going to pour that in the center it's all going to blend anyway it's going to blend so I'm not really worried about that but just as I'm formulating this so the Okinawa blue And again, once I put the shells on it, you won't even be able to see this anyway, but yeah, I hadn't, I had thought this through, but then once I started, then I had a change of heart. I changed my mind. So we are going to pour this Okinawa blue right in the center here. And then we're going to pour the all starry blue around it. Again, you have one idea, but I have so much of this left, so now I have to pour it, so I'm just going to pour it around the outside. So I see this is over the edge on this side, but it's not over the edge on that side. So let's see if sticking a stick under here will move that some. Will that move that? Okay, so let's do a heat gun and let's uh, pop these air bubbles right there in the center. Woo! Didn't realize I was blowing all the glitter all over the place. All right, so what we have here is this resin has run into his head. And I didn't plan on that, but that's okay too. Uh, Let's do one more stick here. 
All right, and I'm not even going to stir that. I'm not going to do anything to it. Well, you know what? Maybe I will. I'll stick the handle in here. And kind of mix those two blues. But again, once you cover it with the seashells, you're not going to see this anyway. This is just me making busy, I guess. And we're going to leave this set for a couple of hours. And then we'll come back and add another layer. This is a little deeper. <clears throat> this is deeper than I thought. And when you are pouring with the casting and coating resins, uh, let me see if I can find it for you. Okay, pourable. Pourable up to a quarter inch. That's what this says, pourable up to a quarter inch. So I actually can't fill the whole thing unless I'm using my deep pour resin. I have the liquid glass uh, thick pour. It says thick pour resin for two to four inches. This um, is a two part like the other, but this is a two to one mixing ratio. That's why you have this big container here and this little container here, because you're gonna put two of this to one of this. Um, but I would be using this if I were pouring the entire turtle at one time. But we're not, we're going to do him in layers. Yeah, we're gonna cover him and then we'll come back and we'll do another layer of blue. Yeah, we'll, when I come back, we'll do another layer of blue. I'll figure it out. I am back and so we need to take the cover off of this and then we need to mix um, the resin for the next layer. Remember this was deep and I didn't want to use the deep pour resin. The deep pour resin usually takes about two to three days actually for it to cure. Um, the resin that I use, the Craft Smart and most of the coating resins um, you can probably unmold in about eight hours, but I always leave it to cure overnight. So what we need to do now is mix another 100 um, milliliters of resin so we can get the fins and the rest of the body done. And I have already marked my measuring cup. And so we're doing 50 milliliters of the Part B hardener. Fifty milliliters of the Part A resin. And we know with our Craft Smart resin that we mix for five minutes. All right, this is mixed. Now, let me just, uh, first of all, take an alcohol wipe, just now let me just clean the edges of this. Okay, so we need to pour another layer of blue on here. But I got to thinking that because I put the little gold 
around the edges here that I'm going to mix a little bit of that uh, gold to go around here and then the rest will be blue. And so we're going to, oh, I have my little cup, my cup. Okay, so we're going to pour a little bit of yellow. Well, it's actually gold. It's not yellow. It's imperial gold. Mix a little imperial gold in here. Okinawa blue. Alright, so we're going to take our little bit of gold that we have, and I'm actually going to take the stir stick and drizzle this in here with the stir stick, and I don't mind it being a little bit, a little bit above the edge. And this is going to blend in with the blue, so we're not really worried about being exact on this. And again, this was not my original plan to begin with, but when I thought about it and I saw the gold, I says, well, you know, that might stand out a little bit more if I put some gold resin in that. Okay. So, let's get to pouring with our blue. Right now, generally the bottom of a turtle is lighter than the rest of the turtle, so we're going to put some more gold on his bottom. And we need more blue. This is not a biggie because this is on the bottom. When this is on your table or on your shelf, on your bookcase, end table, you won't be able to see the bottom. And again, this doesn't show up on the other side. Alright, so let's get the heat gun to this to pop the air bubbles. And we will cover him and allow him to uh, cure. Uh, this won't be an overnight cure. This will be, I'll come in here later on this afternoon uh, because that's not that thick. So, yeah, we'll cover this and then we'll be back in a little while. Uh, we'll, okay, so we're going to cover this and we'll be back, uh, I don't know, in, in several hours. Let's just draw that through there. there and again this doesn't show up on the other side 
but if you turn it over you just want the underside to look as nice as the front all righty gentle people I am back and this is my favorite part of working with resin let's get rid of our sticks and that is the unmolding so you remember um, yesterday or earlier today I guess um, I had decided to add the gold resin because remember I had dusted the flippers notice I'm saying flippers now and not fins finally got my vocabulary straight so we are going to unmold this and see what my first turtle figurine looks like A nice clean pour this is nice and clean no overflow that needs to even be trimmed with a cuticle cutter so that's a good thing. So remember we added the, so let's see what we have. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. The little gold there. Oh, remember I, I tried to do his eyes with the glitter pen and the glitter pen doesn't work on um, silicone and then I went back and used the silver ash and did his eyes so we've got some highlights around his eyes we got a little bit of gold there that on his flippers is fine and so when I did his the seams the cracks in his shell I used that um, chameleon blue cyan that gives it a nice little sheen his tail has some glitter on it that's cool with a little bit of gold right at the tip I like that so the um, the tinsel glitter that I put in his flippers doesn't show up quite as well as I expected but that's okay there he is so remember originally I was pouring clear glitter into the shell and then putting the shells inside the turtle and then changed my mind and decided I was going to put the shells on the outside so that's what we're going to do now and I had that bag of colored shells and so I sat here yesterday and I sorted out the blue ones and so we are going to sit here now and we are going to put blue abalone shells on Mr. Turtle here. I used my Gorilla Adhesive for my last few um, domino bowls, but this is kind of squeezed into whatever, whatever. There's still stuff in here, but we're going to move this because I did get a brand new package of E6000 so that will make this easier I don't have to do that hard squeeze so let's get this out the package Oops. okay so here's where the fun begins <clears throat> simply going to
Ooh, this is so new. Look at this. It's so new. It's just oozing right on out of here. Yeah, I think a turtle with real shells on his back is nicer than having the shells underneath the surface of the This is funny trying to decide what size shell will fit a particular space. No, let's do that on the other side. And which side of the shell you think is the most beautiful? Well, I just discovered a slight problem. It's not, it's not big, but it is a little bit of a problem. And that's that this glue, these shells, if this was glitter, it would be different. But because these are shells and they're heavy, I see that they're kind of on the side sliding down. I think I'm going to have to get my tweezers. So yeah, these are heavy. They are sliding. Oops. But look, you get glue on your fingers. That's part of the fun. I could probably use <clears throat> a Lazy Susan right about now. And you know what? I have one. Let me get it. That way I can turn this. Yes, I definitely like better having the shells on the outside than having the shells embedded inside the resin. I just think this is this is this is nicer. This texture this texture is a good thing. Let's see. He's kind of thick.
See how he's just sliding down? He's heavy. We go back up there. Go back up there. They're heavy. They're, they're thick. Um, actually, I probably should take them off and use them for something else. Yeah, let me take him off. Oops. Yeah, if the shell is too, too thick, too heavy, um, again, it's just sliding down, so... This is time consuming to do, but I think the finished product will speak for itself. I just think the texture, having a shell that actually has shells on it, is much more impressive than, um, <clears throat> when you can see these and see this texture, I just think that's so much nicer than if those shells were down inside the resin. He slid. Look how far down he slid. Go back up there, guy. So the one thing I can say right now is my dusting the cracks in the shells was kind of useless because once I put these on there, they are so, um, they take up so much space that um, you really can't even see the cracks in the shells. So I should have done the cracks in a different color. Yes, this is so much nicer than having the shells embedded in the resin. I just think this, this is gorgeous. Let's see, said the blind man. <clears throat> yeah, I did all that dusting and uh, you can't even actually see, you can't see the seams, you can't see the cracks in this shell. Well. Since this is the first time I did this, this is, again, how we learn what works and what doesn't work. So we know what to do and what not to do the next time. Let's see, do I have a thicker piece? Okay, I got, I've got some space over here that I could use. Okay, so I've got a little spot there where I want um, I want something. Okay, we are almost done. We have. <clears throat> This section right here, let's push him up and let's push him up. He needs to move, 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 yep. All right, so now we need to finish here and here. 
glue, look at my glue, look at my glue. Ah, I'm making a mess. <clears throat> So we're trying to finish up this side over here. I have a little spot right back here. Do we have anything that will fit in there? Let's see. Because we're pretty much down to the end of the shells. Okay, I think uh, I think I like. Yeah, that is so much nicer than if those shells were on the inside. Um, I almost don't like the difference between the height of that shell and that shell. Let's see if I can get this out of here. His back is done. I like that. Okay, so there he is. And now um, I have some, um, what do you call it? I have to find it because I forget what it's called. I have um, this nail art. What is it? Nail art um, shells. Okay, so I have um, some smaller shell pieces that I am going to put on his head, but instead of using the E6000, I am going to use my varnish. <clears throat> so I have my Dura Clear gloss varnish and I'm going to paint that on his head and then we're going to add some of these shells. Now let's see about using the tweezers. Let's see what's in here. that are the right size. of texture. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing.
and I'm going to leave the front I'm going to leave that front with the glitter just like it is and um, let me go get that permanent marker and do his eyes. And so I have these multi-surface <coughs> paint pens. And so we're going to do his eyes. And I think that's the way I want him to be. Oh, he's heavy. He's heavy. So yeah, there you go. So what we need to do now is put some rubber bumps on the bottom. And I always use the 3M self-adhesive rubber bumps. So we're going to just flip him over. Flipper. They are working outside. They are they are digging up the yard because they're putting in new gas lines and so that's why my dogs are barking they're barking at the workmen okay so we put rubber bumps on there uh, I didn't go around this edge I sand I normally sand everything uh, this does not this was a clear clean pour look at that how nice these edges are but because this is not going to be handled uh, we're not going to worry about sanding this so that's our little turtle let me get a um... okay there you go so there's our turtle guy <laughs> <laughs>